Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Demetrius here again here from Obipixel. Let me give you a quick little update today on a very interesting product. Uh, it's really to do things like visualization when it comes to big data and just in general creating charts of visualization that you can possibly use for almost any case. Um, <clears throat> specifically to do visualization of data in a circular format. So I'm going to take you into the world of Circos and it's the ability to uh, do circular representation or visualization of your data to just get a lot more flexibility in your data and just uh, it's just incre it's incredible to see things like genomics, things like uh, migration, things like the mathematical sort of intricacies and, and sort of relationships between data and using circular representations in terms of visualizing is pretty cool. So I'm going to take you into the site here just to give you a little bit of a breakdown of where I'm coming from. And then what I've done is I've actually summarized what you can actually do with Circross. For those of you who are interested in how to use this, I've taken the website and I've sort of because uh, I've used Circos recently, I wanted to give you a little bit of insight as to just summarizing the details, how Circos works, what kind of stuff it gets in, you can actually do with it, and uh, the kind of implementations and so on. So let me pop you into this, and I'll uh, activate this. So you can see, so this is the website you can go to, and that is the circos.ca site. Okay, pretty simple. Uh, hyperlink that you can go to and that's available to all of you. Now what you can also then do is when you go through and you break down you can get to see a lot of the details. Let's maximize the screen here so you can see what's happening and we've got visualization of information. We can do circular layouts and you can get to see some images that have been integrated as illustrations so you can see things like ribbons and tiles and just 2D sort of data tracks and so on and um, it's a very flexible way of visualizing your data, especially things like genomic data, uh, probably very heavily used during the time of trying to come up with vaccinations for COVID, right? So this is a very cool mathematical representation. It's very popular. It's very cutting edge. Um, it's used in many, many industries and uh, lots of companies are behind this. So it's quite, it can get com complex as well. And it's also scriptable. You can automate a lot of the language as well, but it's beautiful for representing data. Now, to summarize all of this, let me take you into a presentation that I've done. So essentially what I've done is I've prepared a presentation that summarizes everything, just to give you a bit of a breakdown as to how Circos works and just to highlight the most important features out of Circos and um, just to give, show you the power, the, 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 the power of circular data visualization. That's the idea. Okay, so let me take you into this presentation and uh, I'll just be discussing. There's no need for my little icon screen to appear or my little picture in picture just to give you a little bit of a breakdown of what's going on. So it is versatile. It's a powerful data virtual um, visualization tool. And uh, it's developed by this chap called uh, Martin Kurinsky. Let me just take my screen out. It's not necessary here. And uh, his team, and then basically it specializes in creating sort of circular plots to explore the complex relationships between sort of various data points. Um, it's actually very good for things like genomics. Uh, it's got great applications across multiple disciplines and uh, it's great for things like data relationships. And uh, when you want to figure out things like the engagement of data and how people are engaging with certain types of services. Uh, so what I've done is I put this little document together and it'll be available for download through the YouTube channel. So you'll get access to this document anytime you want. You can just download the PDF. I don't expect you to put any contact information or any emails. I'm not looking forward for that at all. Uh, it's free. You can download it anytime you want. And it's just a quick little summary guide across the board. I think it's roughly eight slides of how Circross actually works. So let me take you into Circos and show you some details. So really at the heart of Circos, what you have, it's an innovative circular layout and um, it helps you perceive and interpret complex data relationships. See, this unique approach in data visualization really offers some great advantages like it can enhance your clarity in representing sort of intricate interconnections. It can improve pattern recognition and insight discovery. 
uh, it's very useful if you want to, and, and very efficient as well, if you want to use um, a huge amount of data and you want to analyze it simultaneously across multiple data sets. And uh, it's also aesthetically appealing. I mean, when it comes to, you know, having something like this data, isn't it appealing to you when you see circular sort of layouts? and uh, charts, I think it is. It's quite useful. It's also very engaging, very memorable for somebody who's looking at the data. Now, the circular layout is particularly effective when dealing with data sets that have multiple interconnected elements, right? So in other words, when you compare different data sets, it's quite useful. And I've actually started using Circos recently, uh, specifically for my machine learning and AI kind of big data type of data sets that I have to use for my large language models. And uh, it's a very effective way to represent visually how the data is sort of relating to certain things and how different features inside the data sets. When, when we break down words, let's say for example, generative AI, and we break down words into tokens and we see how each of these, one of these words works and how they're related to each other using natural language processing. It's nice to visualize how the machine learning is doing things because it gives me more transparency in how the, the large language model is actually working. So essentially it's great for identifying relationships and it's it's pretty cool for th things like obscure type of data. It shows you outliers, things that are not supposed to be in the data, that kind of thing. Let me break down also some interesting sort of capabilities. So it's really, an incredible system to use when it comes to things like genomics uh, or genomic research. So it offers very cool visualization of complex genomic data. And in this scenario, you have a couple of types of data that I'm just, you know, outlining here a little bit here, and that is genomic alignments, genetic sort of variations, things like synteny analysis and multi-omics integration. So let's break these down a bit further. So the idea of genome or genome, I should say, alignment is it, it, it sort of allow, it allows you to display the alignments between different genomes and chromosomes allowing research to quickly identify sort of regions of structural variation. So this would have been a particularly good type of solution uh, with regards to things like vaccinations, things like viruses, that kind of thing. Then with genetic variations, uh, it's very effective in representing various genetic data or variations in the data, including sort of single nucleotide, polymorphisms, insertions, deletions, copy number variations. And this is particularly good, especially with my machine learning, because you can pick up outliers, meaning data that's in a way misinformation, which means it's not really complete or there's something missing in the data or there's there's uh, not an entirely accurate type of data inside the data set. And you can actually use the genetic variation aspect of this type of illustration to show you or visualization to show you what's happening. Synteny analysis is particularly useful for exploring, say, order, the order across different types of data. Like, for example, if you're looking at things like data for species, for animals and insects and providing sort of insights in the, 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 the progress and the evolution between one type of species and another, it's actually a very cool way of representing and visualizing data. In fact, the, uh, uh, I'm sure companies like National Geographic use this type of synteny analysis to figure out progress of, of species of different insects and animals across the world and how things progress. So it's very cool for that kind of stuff. And then when it comes to multi -omic, or, sorry, multi-omics integration, this is where research can sort of integrate data from various studies, like for example, genomics, uh, transcriptomics, uh, protomics, basically from all sorts of types of data sets into a singular comprehensive kind of visualization, which is always complicated. It's always tricky because it's different data sets, different structures. And this is where Circos actually excels in the ability to truly integrate all types of data sets, all types of structures into a singular visualization. So these capabilities have made Circos really a indispensable 
sort of tool in, in genomic research and contributing type of groundbreaking type of data sets, discovery, machine learning, and just enhancing our understanding of sort of all the different types of phenomena that exist inside data, right? So that's uh, quite a big deal. The other thing as well I wanted to highlight is the versatility of um, Suricos and how it goes beyond the idea of just genomics, right? It, essentially, it's got its roots in genomics, but its versatility extends past this field. So it, it's very flexible in the handling, lots of wide type of varied data or data types, makes it very useful for multiple disciplines. Hence why, uh, for example, I use it in machine learning and AI, because it can go past the idea of, <clears throat> excuse me, just genomics, absolutely can go. So it can do comparative genomics, it can do cancer research, or it can be used in there, which I'm sure it's been used today, and social sciences. So it really enables, in terms of comparative sort of genomics and stuff, it enables researchers to compare genomes across, say, uh, species and, uh, and data sets and types of services and applications and systems and that. It's pretty cool because you can look at the evolutionary changes and relationships between the different types of data series and data sets and um, it's got a lot of application in all sorts of industries specifically even things like biology and uh, uh, sort of phylogenetics and that then with cancer research is predominantly quite heavily used in that and uh, especially things like oncology right where you're doing research on uh, cancer and uh, you're used to sort of visualizing data and this will pick up like circus is great to pick up sort of mutations and uh, how a cancer is progressing based on all the data and the data sets that they feed into the system and how certain types of treatments will be more beneficial based on that visualization. So it helps with things like identifying the right type of drug and targeting um, specific biomarkers inside the genes or the genomes to be able to target things like cancer cells. So it's, it's very promising as a visualization inside cancer research. And then when it comes to social sciences and that absolutely for biological science, uh, for, for sort of in, in information security science, for things like social science, you know, mapping uh, complex sort of networks and um, patterns that things that shows how th certain types of things migrate, like perfect for virus and worm and malware top type of analysis when it comes to the world. Um, especially with, with things like real-time threat analytics engines. They do quite heavily use something like Circos or similar type of visualization tools. And it's great for relationships and you can you can sort of picking up the relationship with the data sets, but then you can pick it up across countries and locations and, and um, vast distances in terms of logistics away from each other. So you can truly see how, say, one type of uh, let's, let's let's say for example a, a piece of malware how that reflects and how it works and how it attacks and what it does according to say one country compared to what it's doing somewhere else and you can pick up patterns and figure out what's going on but it's all visual which is amazing uh, the, the versatility of this tool has sort of lived, led um, circles to be adopted in so many fields and uh, things like urban planning and um, you know uh, sort of IT infrastructure and uh, genomics, like I said, in biology and um, medical industries. It's just incredible. And you, the idea of this so-called system to visualize, it really helps to understand relationships, progress, uh, diversity of data, um, things like outliers, things that are not supposed to be in the data, things that are very visually not supposed to be in there. Very cool for that kind of stuff. Now, in terms of user-friendly tools. That's where Circos is great because its popularity is because of this, its ability to really easily push data into this and then create sort of great visualization tools. So it's got extensive documentation and tutorials <clears throat> pretty much available on their site, extensive documentation. They even have on their site, if you go to their website, if you jump across onto the Circos site, they got a huge amount of data that you can get access to and data sets that you can access to, including software. So you can create sample data sets and work with them and use example plots, plots as in the visual diagrams and help users sort of get yourself started so that, you know, if you're beginning in this, it really is not difficult. I mean, I didn't know how to use Circos literally a week ago and uh, I was busy plotting visualization plots yesterday and charts yesterday uh, with my machine learning and um, 
data sets that I have from cybersecurity. And it only took me a couple of days to sort of get to grips with the system. And it's fine. It works really well. And it's quite surprisingly cool to use and great visualizing. And I, very quickly, I can see what data has mis been represented and things that are not supposed to be in the data or just I'll know straight away when data is not clean. So very cool for picking up misinformation. Uh, and then things like there's a, there's a bunch of tools that they have available for you. Things like the Circos VCF tools, which is it can analyze data as a whole and also as a sequence and uh, can output a specific type of file that you can use. And uh, you can push that type of data to anything, even like Excel spreadsheets. So it has a massive forum on the site. So Circos has a great forum of active users, which is pretty cool. And you can learn from the knowledge share that they have online. And they got massive updates, regular updates, essentially. We've quite, quite big updates and regular updates and great feedback. So there's a lot of resources available for you to learn sort of Circos online. And um, it just it's great because it helps collaboration across the world with, with people, which is really cool to see. Now, you can create pretty good publication outputs. So the idea of the, the, the features of Circos is that you, you're generating really high quality, public ready kind of visualizations, which is really nice because you can hit the, 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 the consumer running. You can hit the presentations that you need to present stuff out. It's, it's pretty cool in terms of the quality of the output. And uh, it, it can be used in any kind of literature, things like science, you know, cyber tech, that kind of stuff. And it, it's it's a very cool way of doing things because it it produces the plots relatively quickly. So you don't have to waste time trying to figure out how to create the physical structure of these visualization tools and, and, and the physical plots, the charts. And uh, yeah, it's just, it handles all that for you. So customization is incredible. You can provide really heavy extension changes, customize your colors, your fonts, your layouts. You can actually tailor it for your, whatever presentation needs that you need. It can produce high resolution vector graphics, which means you can zoom in and zoom in and zoom into these visualization tools, these uh, charts, and there's no loss in quality because it's vector, right? So in other words, it's like a, it's like a PDF, but essentially it's, you, you, there's no loss in quality no matter how much you zoom into it, which is so cool because you can enlarge parts of a particular area and really push that out into presentations and that, and it's quite visual, quite visible. There's no, there's no loss in quality. There's not pixelated in any way because it's vector. Vector is really important for this kind of data. Then the data integration. Data integration is, is quite seamless. I was quite surprised. I was adding data from cybersecurity side of things. I was adding data from malware signatures. I was adding data from the machine learning side in terms of big data and in the large language model that I'm busy mucking around with and experimenting. And um, I actually combine it with say Llama 3, Claude and the GPT models. And I was just, it, it's just pretty cool how you can visualize and create these um, types of displays in terms of visualization plots. And in future videos, I'll probably make a few of those so you can see live what's going on. It's pretty cool. It just takes a bit of processing power to do that. This is just a very simple little video just to introduce you into Circos. And yeah, just take a look and see how you can use it. And then the idea is there's also reproducibility. So the tool sort of is configured in such a way that you can reproduce uh, the, 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 the visualization tools, you know, modify stuff, enhance uh, the data enhance the, the way the tools output and then you can very quickly make changes and bang re reproduce the visualization so it's very very versatile now uh, i picked a couple of interesting places where i would that I, where i've currently sort of seen this uh, type of tool being used and um, you get to see from the charts that I've put together, these are just some of the images that you can actually generate out of this. And it's pretty cool as well that I, the, the bottom one of there, which is what we call a word cloud, is something that I've put together using uh, simple sort of machine learning combined with the visualization tool of Circos and actually creates a word cloud pretty much the way you can do with something like Python. But it's uh, pretty cool. It just it used all the genetic sort of data in a massive data set and I've told it to pull out very specific words and uh, just create a nice word cloud and made an image out of it, which is really quite cool. You can use it for presentations and stuff. But of course, its main power is things like this, the circular uh, v uh, visualization in it. So you'll find the, uh, the fields in terms of applications, things like cancer, 
uh, genomics where you visualize complex sort of complex sort of chromos chromosomal sort of rearrangements and tumors and pick up things like benign tumors or non-benign that kind of thing and uh, you're looking at things like microbium studies where you represent sort of huge differences and in and in, in sort of interactions between different bacterial species and eco ecosystems and that obviously very very heavily used in medical environments uh, personalized medicine of course it's used in pharmaceutical companies things like evolutionary biology neuroscience and it carries on and neuroscience really leads to things like uh, the neural connections in the brain and how things like machine learning can also be used to sort of mimic uh, the, the the usage of how brain works and how it uh, processes and how to respond so that's a quite a big field and it's a great sort of place to uh, push this kind of visualization. I think it's great. And the, the, the diverse applications, these are just some of them. There's many other diverse locations and applications that you can use this. And um, it really is not limited by the data sets that you put in. It's uh, very useful because it can combine all these types of data sets together and create really meaningful insights. And uh, it just helps you understand the, the, the information you're looking at. It makes makes it data look like more of a business intelligence kind of data, which is really important. And then where sort of the future is, just to summarize all of this, circus and data visualization, uh, as, let's, let's move away from this image here, as data visualization sort of continues, right, to evolve, because it is evolving over time. All the, the machine learning that we're seeing today, all the processing capabilities, the fact that we've got great hardware that we can do GPU processing, Circus is kind of like in the front in terms of innovation. You know, the, the tools developed uh, by the developers, it's continuously up, been upgraded. And the, the idea of integrating things like the technology industry, the, the, the scientific industry, all that put together, sort of integrating machine learning algorithms, uh, sort of for automated pattern detection and recognition and enhanced sort of interactive features for web-based visualization and um, sort of improve compatibility with big data collection and applications and handling those the large data sets. And then of course, the development of things like modules that you can add on to Circos, you know, with different languages, even Python as well. So the, the advancements, uh, the, these things will ensure that Circos is going to be around for a long time. And Circos plays a very cruel, uh, 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 cruel, <laughs> my bad, very crucial role uh, in visualizing because it helps us, you know, to, to become more research oriented, helps us to unlock sort of new insights in the data and the complexity of the data. And it really helps us sort of evolve past just using data specific for types of industries like genomes and medical and pharmaceutical. It goes into the technology era. It goes into, you know, real time threat analytics. It goes into things like blockchain and uh, logs of systems and all sorts of types of diverse of data. And you can just bring it all together into a singular visualization. So in this case, a circular visualization, which will it just allows you to really pivot data a lot use a lot more effectively and usefully and you can sort of cement the idea of um, that kind of intelligence in the, the the different applications that you're using because you can then visualize information a lot easier a lot more uh, effectively and more importantly improve on your data sets and figure out where the data outliers are where uh, misinformation possibly exists where there's not complete data and uh, very quickly go okay well this is where we got to add this kind of data set to now produce this kind of visualization so we can get more relationships more pattern understanding in terms of the data which just makes you have more intelligence so that you can make better decisions in business and in the different industries that you're working in so Circos in in summary is uh, a great place to sort of go and try and use some of these services that they have or this type of system that they have because it, it's an incredible package to work with and they've got so many things they've got the guides right where you can actually use all sorts of documentation you can figure out how they're doing stuff how to explore certain types of data they have the different software 
that you can actually go ahead and you can actually use and it'll work on Linux, Mac, Windows, it doesn't matter. You just click on the download, it takes you through the process of installing. You've got massive documentation behind it. Okay, you can install things, you've got documentation behind all this. You've got the different presentations available. You can take a look at how they're using it, all the different talks. You have news citations. There's a big support area where you can work together with the uh, community and you can get some really good support in generating examples of the circular data. How it would work in, say, something like Unix or Linux or the Mac in this case. And then how it would work in Windows, right? How would you push out this information, create the config files? It does have an element of Perl, which is phenomenal because it'll allow you to truly parse data. Perl is an, it's like Python. It's an exceptionally powerful language for parsing, for ripping through data and really filtering out stuff that you're interested in. And um, yeah, they've got lots of tutorials on how to use this. They've got best practices, you name it. I mean, it's they're not short of what you can do with this. And you know, as soon as you get into things like the software side and you want to go and do things like downloading, you've got the options of downloading the necessary versions that you need. So you're not limited by what you can do. Uh, the beautiful thing about Circos is that it is available. You can see the archive. You can see so many things that they have. Here, here's some examples of actual images, example images that can be generated, things like the different types of circular sort of representation for the type of data you're looking at. It's very well used in things like transport industry, uh, car manufacturing, uh, medical industries, uh, you name it, machine learning, uh, in terms of cybersecurity, real-time threat analytics, all sorts of uses of this kind of data. And there's a huge amount of uh, sort of published uh, sort of images that are literally published online. You can see the white papers being published by this by these groups of people. So uh, I'm always curious about certain types of visualization and uh, circular is always useful. And I'm, and I'm always curious about these kind of things where I can see comparative details, or maybe I could use something like this for picking up decisions of types of data and what type of processes are behind those decisions and things like uh, reticulate sort of type of data where you can see evolution of something changing. It's pretty cool. I mean, the visualization tools are amazing here. And the the features alone, just the features alone of Circos really outweigh so many types of other visualization charts. And you can use this to create almost anything. You can use it to create things like um, paired location type of charts, scatter plots, you know, line graphs, histograms, heat maps, especially very cool for heat maps. It's not just circular visualization. You can make it do all sorts of things. And um, yeah, it's just a, a very cool way of doing things. And you can also do tabular visualization. You can actually pull out data from that and explain the tabular sort of output of the data and really dig into the information. So yeah, it's it's highly sort of technical in many respects. But the funny thing is that even if you're not so technical, you can actually get started really quickly with your data visualization with Suricos and very, 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 um, swiftly actually get up and running surprisingly and then of course digging in digging into the outputs digging into how things work will be a little bit more complicated but i mean that's just time right time to learn how to use a product so i just want you to give to get a little understanding of what i've come across recently because of working with things like big data working with machine language and large language models and also working with customers that are in things like the medical industry transport industry finance and uh, the types of tools that I've come across and Surcross was one of the tools that I came across and uh, it was pretty, pretty cool. Uh, I, it, I came across it by mistake because I, I was always curious about genome and how mapping of um, and tagging of certain types of genes work when it comes to things like gene splicing and that I'm always curious about information like that. And then I realized actually, you know, Circos can be used in all sorts of types of data sets. And if you, if you have even multiple types of data sets that are completely vastly different, I mean, I was mixing malware data sets with things like um, real-time threat analytics, and then I was mi mixing it up with sort of logistics data and, and, and sort of delivery and transport data. And it's like really interesting to see how 
the data can sort of relate to each other, even though they're not necessarily related, which is rather fascinating to create sort of patterns and pattern matching. I know it sounds insane, but it gets interesting. You know, when you start to work with data sets and you start to think, wow, this data set is completely different to that one, but yet the visualization is very similar. So there's obviously very similar patterns in the way this type of data is either collected, processed or used or potentially uh, viable for the industry. So it's like, hmm, and you can get you can get cross parallels. You can figure out, OK, well, in this industry, this kind of data operates this way. And then in that industry, it operates in a similar way, yet they're two different industries. Why? Why is that happening? Are there common patterns here? So and then you can learn from different data sets and sort of figure out oh, interesting models after that. And it just gets it just gets really, really fascinating. So I thought I'd give you a little bit of an introduction to Surcos. Uh, once again, if you go across to uh, the website, let me just pop you onto the website quickly. If you go on to the website, I'll take you now. I'm just going to go into the SOCOS site and uh, you'll get to see the details on there. So it's surcost.ca. I'm not affiliated in any way whatsoever with a company. I don't have any ties to them. I just use the product just to see how it works and it works phenomenally well. So I thought I'd mention it in a video because a lot of people may not know this. And um, yeah, go ahead and experiment with this because why not? You might as well try something different. See if it can come up with patterns and figure out maybe there's issues with your data or there's missing data because it'll very clearly show your outliers. Outliers meaning the data is not really complete or not meant to be there or something's wrong with the data. You can very quickly see that. And um, yeah, see how it works for you. Otherwise, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks to my subscribers for subscribing to my channel. I always appreciate you. And for anyone new to my channel, it's a simple little click to the subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything and it helps a lot with the algorithm. So if you do that, thank you once again. And uh, I hope the videos that I make, you know, although I make very different kind of videos all the time, I'm concentrating on media, technology, lifestyle. It's a big mix between all of those. I don't like to niche myself into one thing because we human beings, we can pretty much do anything if we put our minds to it. So you might as well be a little bit more creative and use different types of tools. And yeah, just because I'm a high tech freak and I'm also particularly good in media doesn't mean I don't understand data and visualization. So uh, I wanted to use something like Circos and I found it and it works well. And why not tell people about it? So that's what this video is about. So hopefully you've learned something new, something different and try it out. Try it out for yourself. What's the worst that can happen? I mean, it's just visualizing so you can see potentially, possibly interesting details of your data. And it's great visualization in terms of circular because it works very well in presentations, especially when you're communicating very, very important information to stakeholders and companies and you want to pivot data a lot easier and you want to see relationships and patterns and, and figure out potential future models. I think it's just a great way of looking at data. And uh, yeah, otherwise it's Demetrius here from OB Pixel. Thank you for your time and I'm signing out.